Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Train Simulator Classic, aka Railworks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest from Victory Works. Uh, this model has been out for a little bit, I just haven't had the chance to purchase it or go over it, but finally got a unit, so we're going to go over it. Uh, this is a bit of an unusual one for the GWR as these locomotives were built right at the end of the GWR's existence before being merged into British Rail or what they call nationalization or something along those lines but uh, from the frame up or from the top of the frame up it's a pretty standard GWR design uh, I believe they use like a, what do they call it, a number 10 boiler or something along those lines with a pannier style tank setup. Uh, however, they're a little bit different in that they have outside cylinders, wall shirts, valve gear, and a fairly short wheelbase of like 12 feet, something like that. Uh, very uh, what is it? Similar to the USATC's S100s. Uh, <coughs> what the purpose of them was is a bit unknown. Um, the Wikipedia page is fairly short on them. These were fairly short-lived locomotives. I believe they didn't even get a full like 10 years worth of service out of them. Uh, they weren't suitable for very many places they're short wheel basement that they couldn't run at high speeds uh, but they're heavy so they couldn't go many places where a short wheel base locomotive would normally go uh, it was just a real odd locomotive that really doesn't seem to have had much of a purpose uh, so they were withdrawn pretty quickly and scrapped pretty quickly with one being preserved and two others almost being preserved uh, three locomotives were sold into or bought by a preservation railroad and two of the locomotives were used as part sources for as long as they could and then those two locomotives were scrapped in like the 1970s and the last remaining locomotive, number 1501, has operated uh, on and off in preservation service on the Severn Valley, I believe. Something along those lines. Uh, weirdly enough, the locomotive has operated longer in preservation than it has in actual revenue service. But... It is a very odd design. It's a very odd choice for the GWR. Or I guess British Rail, really. It's a GWR design, but like I said, it came about right at the end of the GWR. So, that's really about all there is to say about the history on these things. I mean, they're not... They're not particularly fantastic or anything. I mean, they're just kind of there. It's one of those locomotives that... Just uh, appeared. Nobody really knew why it had to be, and then it went away because it didn't have much of a purpose to be. So, Victory Works has brought us that uh, that model, and we we're gonna play around with it a little bit. You're gonna get a GWR scheme, an NCB clean. An NCB heavily worn, and then a dozen different British Rail variants, uh, and 1501 as preserved uh, today. And you'll get some of these uh, hopper cars with loaded or unloaded. Only coal, something like a 16 ton, I believe. 
14 ton. <coughs> What's really cool about the passenger car, or these freight cars, is uh, Victory Works gave us a reskinning model. So it's already been stripped out of all the paint and whatnot. It's ready for you to reskin it into whatever skin you could possibly want. It's pretty neat of them to do. And we're going to go ahead and start off with these since we're already back here. And truth be told, they don't look half bad. The modeling looks pretty darn good on the texturing is uh, I don't know not my favorite <laughs> uh, lettering's a little blurry right here the black looks well, much better this car looks a lot better I think texture wise the detailing on all of them is pretty nice I mean look at it, three rivets bolts bells buttons and whistles all over them so the, the actual model itself is pretty nice, but I'm not particularly fond of the weathered or the green. I think the texturing looks a little wonky. The black uh, black doesn't look half bad. The clean-ish British Rail variant doesn't look half bad. So yeah, there those are. And of course the locomotives. <laughs> now the sounds across all of them are the same, so I'm not going to bother operating every one of them. But I do have their uh, manual pulled up here. Because in usual Victory Works fashion, you can change all sorts of bells, buttons, and whistles on the locomotives themselves. Whenever you place them into a scenario, double click on the locomotive. And you'll get a little fly out over here on the side that's got a bunch of letters and numbers. Uh, and if you change those letters and numbers to what their manual has, it will change up different things on the locomotive to personalize it to whatever you're aiming for. So that's pretty neat. So let me go ahead and pull that up. So for the BR 1949 model, you'll be able to change locomotive number, shed code, company logo, power disc, safety bonnet being brass or painted, uh, headboard, chimney being copper or painted, smoke box handles, bunker lower steps, toolbox, Speedometer, head code, uh, BR5056 and 56 through 65 and preserved. Uh, looks to be all the same things besides the cab side numbers can be changed to red or black. And you can choose whether or not you want lining, which I assume would be the, uh, the black striping along the... Uh, on the box here. For the NCB models, change the color of the safety bonnet, headboard, the chimney, smoke box handles, bunker lower steps, toolbox, speedometer, cab side numbers, background, spark arrester, and head code. For the GWR and the preserved model, company logo, power disc, safety bonnet, headboard, chimney, smoke box handles, bunker lower steps, toolbox, speedometer, lighting, and head code. <coughs> Quite nice. <coughs> now we also have work from uh, Steam Sound Supreme on these models, so special mention there. Steam Sound Supreme did the sounds for these. So as one can imagine, they're probably quite nice. Oh goodness. 
my allergies decided to come to play today and I am not feeling too phenomenal. So let's get up close. Check out the nice detail work. So Victory Works typically does a really good job of their detailing and their animation. I've never been particularly fond of their texturing. Their texturing looks alright. Uh, but it their texturing looks very simulator-esque. It very much looks like a computer game. Whenever you compare it to something like Caledonia Works models or Bossman Gaming. Uh, which, I mean, I get, it's not bad, per se. It's just definitely different. It's, it's kind of hard to mix Victory Works with other brands' models and they look right, I guess, due to their texturing style. Again, it's not bad. It's just very noticeably different. It's not really a, uh, not really a perk or a nerk. Just kind of, it's kind of there. <laughs> but their detailing, on the other hand, is really nice. Lots of bolts, lots of 3D rivets, lots of proper 3D modeled parts. And for once, we ain't got to go diving off into the frame to find the rest of the running gear. There's really nothing in here. Because it's all on the outside. It's a pretty darn good looking locomotive overall. You can definitely see the USATC inspiration. Uh, it has a very similar appearance to the, uh, the S100s. Again, why that was thought to be needed is unknown. Uh, it's not to say they're bad looking locomotives, to be perfectly honest. They're pretty nice looking. I mean, I, I do not like Del Pair fireboxes. I think they look goofy. Uh, but as a whole, the locomotives actually do look pretty good. It's just kind of an odd choice for a GWR locomotive. It's an odd choice for the GWR designs, I should say. Mm, not particularly fond of that line. Both those lines kind of look eh, low res. Not too bad from back here. Not too great when you get up on them though. Boy, that weather looks worn out. We hop over here to all the many different British rail variants. Now, what the differences between all these are, I could not say. I can't imagine these went through very many changes, given their really short lifespan. But... They do exist. They are here. This is what you get. Somebody far more knowledgeable than I can probably tell you the finer differences. So let's run one. Oogity boogity boogity boo. Control A. Cylinder cocks crack the throttle a little bit so we can start pushing a little pushing a little bit out. But while we're at it, we'll hop in the cab, so usual fashion. These are very interactive models. Uh, windows, cab roof. These back doors are there it is. You gotta look for where the hitbox is on these, but they open as well. Same for these rear windows here. Doors. Seats. Uh, not the driver's side. Fireman's side, yes. <coughs> it 
should all translate outside. Which it does. <coughs> does have twin whistle. Got a brake whistle and a regular whistle. There it is. Control space will play uh, different little tunes. Obviously, we got our reverse gear. Got to hold the E key to unlock it. Got our sanders. We'll do push out the typical sand design there. Got a nice sound to it. Open up our firebox. In advanced mode, the firebox is uh, simulated. The shoveling and whatnot is all simulated. The firebox will slowly build up as you guys seen. It'll change colors. We don't need a particularly large fire because we don't have a large train. And speed is 25 mile an hour. We're not going fast. It's not a fast locomotive. Brakes, small ejector here. Below 10 pounds for the steam brake to operate. Press the brake reservoir drain key or hold the key shortcut. Well, that's nice of them. They give us tips and tricks. So that is down here. Right. Right drain reservoir. Yeah. And well, let's see if the key will work. Keep binding. Air blower. That's kind of cool. It changes the uh, the light of the fire. See, we got our dampers. Firebox doors. Come on. Let's see, we got our uh, injectors are over here. It's kind of an odd place for the injectors. Like our driver and fireman injectors are over on the fireman side. And you do have individual cab views for firebox, the sight glass, pressure gauges, <coughs> and the injector levers. Fireman side window, steam heating, our injector levers. Vector steam driver. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's see, there we go. Where's our uh, ATC acknowledgement if it's ATC fitted? And I think that is about it. Alright. Little cab light. And rear sanders. That, I believe, is it. Not a particularly complex copo. Uh, yeah, words. Uh, not a particularly complex locomotive.
So, what is it? Control one, two, three, four, five. That'll change your headlight codes, and then H will change the color or change whether or not it's turned on. You got a red light if you needed. Oh, I didn't miss some little side things. Definitely sounds nice. Now we're on the West Somerset Railway. Uh, speed limit is supposed to be 25 on iron. Not really worried about it. Play over here, burning off pressure like nobody's business. No? Definitely sounds nice. Definitely sounds nice. somewhere. <clears throat> Rod animation looks quite nice. Valve gear looks quite nice. I mean overall it is a nice looking little locomotive. Freight car sounds could be better. I have definitely heard better. The rod clank's kind of nice. Now, in usual fashion. You do have to uh, play with your injectors to get them to work properly. You got to go by the sound because there is a spot where it'll be open too much and you'll be pushing a high pressure sound and it won't be putting any water in the, in the, uh, in the boiler or too little and you'll just be dumping water on the ground. Oh yeah, sounds on the locomotive, quite nice.
Stopping sounds kind of nice. But yeah, there it is, guys. The GWR 1500s from Victory Works. Fairly neat locomotive. Fairly niche, but definitely neat. Uh, <coughs> definitely be a lot of fun on some short lines and preservation lines, I think. Something like... Uh, Return to Merity and whatnot. Uh, could be a lot of fun there, but definitely recommend go going and checking it out. It is available on Steam Sound Supreme's website. Uh, link in the description. I think it was cool. I think it's cool. It is a little bit more expensive. Uh, a little bit on the expensive side for what it is. Uh, something like twenty-two U.S. dollars. 2022 20, somewhere in that area um, it's about on par with what new DLC is but I think for what you're getting it's kind of pricey not to say it's bad at all uh, it's definitely a nice model so definitely go check it out if it is something that interests you um, something to add to your GWR collection but hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.